Hello and welcome to this edition of Oscar Crawford Christian Media Presents. I'm Oscar Crawford. Today's message is entitled, Illegal Aliens in the Kingdom of God. And the text we will be using today as a reference comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24 and verse 14. It simply says, Thou shalt not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy strangers that are in the land within thy gates. All of you are aware that over the past years we've been dealing with a developing issue around the notion of people who are inside the homeland illegally. You'll see some of these are from the headlines from across the nation. And you would think an illegal alien might look like the person up in the left-hand corner of the slide. Because most of us think of alien from science fiction movies. But we've made alien to be any person who is in the country uh, with an established status of being illegal. Whether entering illegally or whether having entered legally and having become legal by staying past the time they were supposed to stay. So you've seen these kinds of headlines in the last few years. And I want to raise the question with you, at least this one and, and a few others today. If you'll notice the question at the right-hand bottom of the page, is this how the indigenous peoples of the Western Hemisphere felt when the explorers arrived? Who are these aliens? I want you to think about that for a moment. Thank you for joining me today by clicking on this video. I want to address the status of identity issue, illegal aliens. I address the issue with the awareness that colonial powers populated the Americas with themselves and their slave populations by force. The descendants of both colonial powers and slaves now challenge the integrity of contemporary persons inside the homeland from other nations without the benefit of legal documentation. I ask the question why, and I invite you to. Does this mean one who once broke the rules would not tolerate others doing the same? Today's, today's information focus centers on the status of identity established as illegal aliens and whether or not the ecclesia, the called out ones, the body of Christ, the church, has a different perception of the status of identity than the government. Or are the positions of Caesar and the church the same on this issue, except with perhaps for different reasons? The IRS defines illegal alien as one who has entered the United States illegally and is deportable if apprehended, or one who has entered the United States legally but who has fallen out of legal status and is deportable. Please share this short prayer with me. Great Divine, you constantly honor us with your presence, love, and energy. We honor you with our gratitude. We love you ourselves and others because you first loved us. Inspire our hearts to live and love responsibly with all that is in us. Make us to be instruments of your service and peace. And bless now this your servant to share what has been revealed. In Jesus' name, amen. 21st century Americans are complicit in a criminal action that began in the late 15th century. Historical European explorers' records report the discovery of lands in the Western Hemisphere ripe for the taking and exploitation. There was just one little insignificant problem. The lands were already populated with many indigenous cultures. Explorers saw the inhabitants as merely an inconvenience to be managed. Explorers not only took lands belonging to indigenous people, but brought with them indigenous West African cultures to serve as slaves in building the New World, parenthetically, so-called. These explorer explorers were Christians. I need you to clearly hear that. These explorer exploiters were Christians. I reiterate, these explorer explorers were Christians with the support of the crowned heads of Europe and the official agency of Christ on earth the Roman Catholic Church. These are facts. Incidentally, all of the explorers are of European ancestry, primarily England, France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Belgium, and Holland. By color of skin, all are considered white peoples. 
the peoples the explorer colonial developers exploited and controlled by force were the indigenous people populating North America, African and Caribbean peoples, Central and South America, as well as Asians, the red, the black, the brown, and the yellow. There yet exists a notion that life in the United States is replete with opportunity. Many seeking a better life go to extremes to make America home. People primarily from Central America and Mexico seek access to the United States in search of this better life. Others come fleeing hostile governments, seeking survival for themselves and their families. During 400 years of slavery in the Americas, the church was profoundly quiet. The church is also profoundly quiet on illegal immigration. I ask the question why and invite you to. Exploiting working people not protected by union worker bargaining agreements made migrant workers available for exploitation. Illegal aliens come to the United States to take jobs that offer them greater opportunity and they are often welcomed by U.S. employers who are able to hire them for wages lower than they would have to pay to hire U.S. workers. Please follow the link at the bottom of the page to get more information there. Fact. Deportation is referred to as removal in legal terms, and it occurs when the federal government orders that a non-citizen be removed from the United States. This can happen for different reasons, but typically occurs after, immigrant, after the immigrant violates immigration laws or more serious criminal laws. Now, uh, sitting President Barack Obama has had more than 2 million illegal aliens uh, deported uh, during his tenure, and uh, people on both sides of the issue saying that's not enough, and people affected saying it's way too much. The number of illegal aliens. The illegal immigrant population of the United States in 2008 was estimated by the Center for Immigration Studies to be about 12 million people, down from 12.5 million people in 2007. Other estimates range from 7 million to 30 million. According to a Pew Hispanic Center report, in 2004, 57% of illegal immigrants were from Mexico. 24% were from other Latin American countries, primarily from Central America. 9% were from Asia, 6% were from Europe and Canada, and 3% were from Africa and the rest of the world. Now I want to read you a text that, that also serves as a consideration for this discussion. It comes from the very first chapter of the book of Exodus. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Is that the fear of many Americans about illegal immigrants? Now there arose up a new king over Egypt who didn't know Joseph. And he said unto the people, Behold, this people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come, let us deal with them wisely, lest they multiply and it come to pass, that when there falleth out any war, they also join unto our enemies and fight against us. So get them up out of the land. Well, they didn't get them out of the land. They made them slaves. Does America or a segment of America fear the presence of illegals becoming voters and developing legislation outside the parameters of the status quo? Think about that. Is it as simple as not tolerating others doing what early American settlers did to the indigenous population of the Americas? Think about that. Is there the fear that people of color will take over the former one nation under God, primarily white republic? What is the real issue here? The number shift. According to information released, the non-Hispanic native-born white population will become less than 50% before 2040. Brookings Institution demographer William Fry told Al Jazeera America, overall there is a white decline and minority gain for most of the projection period. The majority minority tipping point date is 2044, meaning that by 2045, the white population will become the racial minority. The politics. Employers in the U.S. hire illegal immigrant workers against the backdrop of it being illegal and illegals being ineligible to work. Latino citizens are profiled and demanded to provide proof of citizenship. 
will white people feel victimized should they be profiled over the next 35 to 40 years? These are the dynamics of the politics. Are they different for the church? Who are these non-traditional sinners seeking access to the kingdom of God on earth? The church. They are not the usual sinner list of suspects, the adulterers, substance abusers, liars, and thieves. They're also the people keeping up the rumor mill through gossip creating conflict. There are the busybodies always trying to be in other people's business starting trouble. The nation of Israel of the Old Testament established themselves as the chosen people of God. Their intention was to produce and maintain a pure bloodline. There was to be no mating with other cultures, even if that meant mating with family as Abraham marrying his half-sister Sarah. Mixed race mating was prohibited. In the Christian era, this is designed to prohibit Christians mating with marrying non-Christians. Early on in America's development, the church, the kingdom of God on earth, was a homogenous and culturally exclusive organizational institution. Illegal aliens in the kingdom of God resulted from slaves learning to read the Bible and being taught the scriptures by white preachers and evangelists. The result of sharing the word of God prompted indigenous people and slaves to respond to the call of the gospel. They presented a problem to the homogenous church that wanted to stay that way. Teach the heathens Jesus, but keep them in their subservient place. 1787, free blacks worshiping at St. George's Methodist Church in Philadelphia are asked to remove themselves from the altar because they pray too loud. Indigenous peoples believe differently even though they have responded to the call of the gospel. Now different others continue to respond to the call of the gospel. The gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender respond to the call of gospel of the gospel and access the kingdom to the displeasure of many. Shall the differently affection be denied Dr. King's beloved community, the church, and the kingdom of God on earth because of different preference for mating? Shall the usual suspects be favored over the different, or is there still room at the cross? Old Testament scriptures teach, Thou shalt not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of the strangers that are in the land within thy gate. Deuteronomy 24, verse 14. In all the teachings of the New Testament, Jesus never teaches the kingdom is exclusive in any context. In fact, he teaches just the opposite is true. It is never assumed the community of believers making up the kingdom will ever be sinless. There is no assumption of sin-free living. There is clear commentary on Jesus standing in for all who love, who sin, and taking on our sin that he might see us as righteous. Remember, that's the golden text for my work and life. Uh, Rome, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, For God hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. All of us have been made righteous because of the act of Jesus on the cross. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. By its very nature, the commentary is inclusive in context, suggesting these model the inclusive differences among all people that are one in Christ. In the first, the first uh, preacher who preached the first sermon after Pentecost and Jesus' resurrection opened his mouth in Acts 10, verse 34, and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. This is either true or it is not. No one in the Christ-centered kingdom relationship can be called illegal or alien. We are all one made righteous by the act of God in Christ on the cross. There are no illegal aliens in the kingdom. There are no illegal aliens in the kingdom. There are no illegal aliens in the kingdom. All in Christ are one. I don't care what you are. I don't care if you are a criminal convicted of heinous crimes and living behind bars. You may have relationship in the kingdom. Now, we're going to keep you locked up because you're behaviorally dangerous, but you have presence in the kingdom of God just like the rest of us who have done wrong. Some of our wrong is just not criminal. There are no illegal aliens in the kingdom of God. My brothers and sisters, thank you for joining me. Let's pray. May we always be found embracing our brothers and sisters. In all of our beautiful differentness, we are made one in family, community, kingdom, connection. May it ever be so that we love one another as Jesus has loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, one and all. Until next time, I'm Oscar Crawford.